All right, so this is Chapter 8, Geometry, Section 8.6, which covers topology, which is really, really cool and interesting, so hopefully you guys will share my sentiment. In this section, there are several videos that are embedded in your notes. So my advice to you is to uh, go to the hyperlinks of the, the notes that are located on campus, Canvas and bring up the videos, you know, stop them so they're ready to go. There's a video that is on the Mobius strip. There's one that's on the Klein bottle. And there's another one on the uh, Jordan curve. And it's kind of like an introduction to topology. So those three videos you will need as you're watching these. I will not be covering that part of your notes. So you will need to watch those videos to handle that. So when we go through the notes, and I'm going to start on this now, I will tell you, you know, hey, watch this video, and then I'm going to skip to the next part that I need to go over with you. So the introduction, we're going to be studying topology, which is the process of stretching and bending of geometrical figures. Remember in 8.5, we had rigid motion. So we were taking the figure, picking it up, and moving it someplace else. We weren't uh, doing anything with the figure in terms of stretching it or morphing it. Topology is sometimes referred to the rubber sheet geometry because we can stretch a figure, we can morph it. And in fact, if you are into movies, some of the old movies that they have uh, show morphing of someone turning into a werewolf, for instance, this would be considered topology, the process of doing that. So in this section, we will be studying one-sided figures, Jordan curves, and geometrical topological equivalents. So objective one, we're going to look at one-sided figures. So the first one we're going to check out is what's called the Mobius strip. So Mobius strip, or the Mobius band, and it should actually have an umlaut over the O. So let's go ahead and fix that. Doink, doink is a one-sided, one-edge surface that is topological item. So it's a very special shape. Um, it's one-sided, meaning we do not have a top or and a bottom. We just have one or the other. So here's what a Mobius strip looks like. Um, so see, see this yellow figure right here that's in your notes? Um, so it's right here. So that's a Mobius strip. And... You know, th this piece of paper that you're writing your notes on right now is two-sided because it has a front and has a back. If I place a line on the front of the paper and wanted to continue on to the other side, I would need to pick it up, turn it over, and then pick it up, uh, write the next line. Thus, I would have a dis disruption while I'm drawing my line. If I would draw a line in the center of a Mobius strip, then I would never have to pick up my pencil because it is one-sided. And that's what makes it really unique. So it has one side. The Mobius strip has some really cool, unique properties. To see some of these interesting properties, you're going to watch the following video to answer the next questions in the notes. Feel free to do the experiment with the presenter. If you want to do the experiment with him, you are going to need several strips of paper of equal width and some tape. So right now, you're going to pause my video and you're going to watch the uh, the video on Mobius that can be found right below on this YouTube link right here. So please watch this and fill out the following. Okay, so pause me, do that, and then we're going to pick up. So after you've watched the video on the Mobius strip, the next section that we're going to look at or one-sided figure is a Klein bottle. A Klein bottle is a one-sided item that resembles a bottle. Um, so it's very, very, very unique. And I know I already said it's one-sided. So a Klein bottle looks like this following figure in purple. It is one-sided, so that means if I start to draw a line starting at the top and going around, I would never need to pick up my pencil. Like the Mobius strip, the Klein bottle has some really unique properties. Now it's time for you to watch the closed caption video to understand the Klein bottle. 
The YouTube link is located in your notes, and I told you at the beginning of this video to have those ready. So now you want to watch the video about the Klein bottle. And by the way, uh, the person who is videoed is, is very lovable. It kind of reminds me of Doc Brown from uh, Back to the Future. So watch that video, pause me, and then we'll come back. All right, now that you've watched the Klein bottle video, the next objective we're gonna look at is topological equivalence. Two geometric figures are topologically equivalent if we can elastically twist, stretch, bend, or shrink the first figure into the second figure without ripping the first figure. So now we have to find out what a genus is. So a genus of an object is to find how many through holes the object contains. So here are some visual examples of a genus of an object. So genus zero is a marble because there are no through holes through that marble. Genus one is a donut because why we have one through hole through the donut. Genus two is a kettle. The reason why is because we have two through holes on the handles uh, of the kettle. And genus three or more would be an example of a strainer because we have several of through holes through the strainer. So how is a donut and a coffee cup similar? They have the same genus, which equals one, okay? Because you have a donut, it has a through hole and a coffee cup. And it's kind of hard to draw on here. But anyways, a coffee cup, let's make this darker. A coffee cup has one through hole as well, right through the handle. Okay, so here's the through hole here, through hole there. Okay, find the genus of the following objects. So if we look at number 25, we see that there are one, two, three, four, five through holes. So the answer to 25, the genus is five. Uh, 26, there are two through holes through the button. So the genus is two. 27 is a piece of paper with three th through holes. The answer is three. And 28 is some kind of a tool with a one hole through it, one through hole, so the answer would be one. By the way, if you had a bowling ball, the answer for that, the genus would be zero because it does not have any through holes. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is Jordan curves. A Jer Jordan curve can be thought of a figure twisted out of shape. So if we look at the figure below, we start with a circle, and if I start twisting it, I get form B, which is kind of like a sideways U. And then I get C, which is the beginning of a spiral. And then if I twist it more and more and more, I get figure D. So there is an inside and an outside in a Jordan curve. So the next thing you want to do is watch this video on the Jordan curve. So you're going to have to pause me, watch the video on Jordan curve, and it'll tell you how to figure out if a figure is inside or outside of a figure because when they get super complicated, it's hard to trace around, figure out if point A or B are in the figure. So after you watch that video, so you should have watched the Jordan curve video, uh, we're going to do this, this last bit. The following Jordan curve contains, actually it contains two points that are visible to us. So two points. Determine if point B is inside or outside the closed curve. So point B is here. So what I'm gonna do with point B is I'm going to draw a line from point B to outside the curve. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count how many times it crosses the line. So it crosses the line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So it crossed the line 11 times to get outside of that curve. So if you remember, 11 is an odd number. So if it's an odd number or an odd number of lines it crosses, 
then we can conclude that that point, uh, point B, is inside the curve. If it would have crossed an odd amount of, excuse me, if it would have crossed an even amount of times, then it would be inside, it would be outside the curve. Odd, let me write this down just because I'm confusing myself. Odd is inside and even is outside, okay? So if it crosses an odd amount of lines, the point is inside the curve. If it crosses an even amount of lines, it's outside the curve. So point B, point B is inside of the Jordan curve. The reason for my answer is that it crossed the Jordan curve 11 times, which is an odd number. Okay, all right, so I believe that is the end, it is, of this section. So remember, please make sure you watch those three videos inside the notes and in order to understand and fill out all of the notes to get full credit. All right, that's it.